Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon. Let's have some fun. Story brought to you by Suki. Laura stood in front of me, trembling with rage. What is the meaning of this? She said. I turned around from fixing dinner and with a jolt of terror saw that Laura had found my secret stash. She clutched a crumpled fistful of my panties and stockings in one hand. In the other, she held my favorite pair of high-heeled sandals. She held them up to me accusingly as I stood there absolutely speechless. I should have known as my collection of clothes grew larger, so did the chance that this moment would come. So who is she? Laura said. Someone at work? Tell me. Right then, I realized she had completely mistaken the situation. She thought I was having an affair. Laura, I stammered. It's not like that. Oh, it isn't, is it? She snapped, clearly not believing me. Then why don't you tell me what it is like? I had no idea how she would react to the truth. What was worst, finding out your husband was unfaithful to you or that he was a closet sissy? I knew there was no way she would stay with me if she thought I was having an affair. I made a quick decision in favor of the truth. There really was no choice. For the next five minutes or so, I did my best to be coherent as I told her about my most secret fantasies. Laura listened quietly, as if evaluating the sincerity of what I was saying and still holding off final judgment. Then I took her to the computer and brought up the page for one of my favorite cross-dressing sites. Even showed her into the chat room where I'd spent many a night talking to my girlfriends while pretending to be at work on some project or other for my job. Laura watched with obvious interest. To my immediate relief, her anger seemed to have disappeared, nor did she seem disgusted by what I showed her. It was my fear that she'd divorce me that had led to hide from her my passion for dressing up these last three years. Instead, a whole different expression seemed to dawn on Laura's face. What's your screen name? She asked, looking at the prompt that served as entrance to the chat room. Juliet, I said a little shyly. Juliet? Laura said, sounding amused. That's very cute. And everyone on here is a girl like you? Why, yes, I said. Once in a while, a real woman comes on, but mostly it's just out of curiosity or because she has a husband or boyfriend who's a girl. And what do you talk about? Clothes, makeup, hair. Sometimes we share fantasies. I see, Laura said. I could tell she was calculating something, but I didn't know exactly what it could be. Laura, I said, figuring I'd give it a shot. You're not angry, are you? No, she said. I'm not mad. You aren't having an affair. You're not talking to other women. There's no problem as far as I'm concerned. I felt a flood of happiness and gratitude race through me. It was like a huge burden had been lifted from my shoulders. Oh, thank you, Laura. Thank you for understanding. You don't know what a relief it is to be able to tell you. I've always wanted to, but I was scared you would leave me. Laura laughed. Over something like this, never. I think it's rather darling, actually. The whole encounter, which had started out as a nightmare, was turning into a dream come true. In fact, she continued, I'd like to see what kind of girl you make. She handed me back the lingerie and silver high-heeled sandals. Go upstairs and make yourself pretty, she said. I'll finish fixing dinner. For the first time in our married life, I didn't have to hurry or hide. I spent time carefully applying my makeup and lipstick, using the special lip liner I had bought only a few days earlier, but had despaired of ever actually using. I brushed mascara onto my lashes and added just a bit of eyeshadow. I stepped into a pair of pastel-colored panties and stood in front of my closet, agonizing for some minutes over what to wear for my debut. I finally chose a simple yellow skirt with a matching halter top. There was no time to do anything with my hair, so I just pulled it back in a ponytail using one of Laura's big black scrunchies. Deciding against stockings or pantyhose, I slipped into a pair of sandals and holding the railing for support, made my way back downstairs on trembling knees. Laura turned as I made my entrance and let out an appreciative whistle. I turned fire engine red. Laura laughed. You know something, Bruce? I mean, Julia, you don't look bad at all. That outfit is absolutely precious. Turn around and let's have a look from behind, will you? I turned around slowly, heart pounding in my chest. 
I love that little halter top and those sandals make your feet look so dainty. Why don't you paint your toes? I explained that I had on occasion, but that I was always too afraid she might see them and catch me. Hmm, she said. I guess that explains all those nights you wore your socks to bed. I didn't dare speak for fear of saying something wrong. Well, I guess you won't have to worry about that anymore, will you? I shook my head absolutely thunderstruck at my good luck. Only problem, Laura said, stepping forward and pressing at the front of my skirt. Is this right here? Kind of pushes the material out and ruins the line, don't you think? I nodded mutely. Let's put dinner on hold for a while and go upstairs, Juliet, Laura whispered. Perhaps you can make love to me as a girl. Would you like that? Yes, I managed, backing it up with an enthusiastic nod. I would very much. I was trying to control myself. So would I, Laura said. I've never been with another girl before. The next hour we spent engaged in the best sensations since we first met. I did all the things I had only fantasized about. Over the next several months, things gradually did change in our relationship. Laura enthusiastically encouraged my feminization. She asked me to print out the stories and fantasies that most appealed to me. She read through the stories with great interest, highlighting passages and making notes in the margins. Meanwhile, she helped me shop, instructed me on how to apply makeup, and showed me how to properly set my hair. She was always surprising me with little gifts, nighties, a pair of dangle earrings for my newly pierced ears. With her help, I was able to modify my everyday wardrobe to affect an androgynous look even at work. Now, even when I wasn't fully dressed, I still felt feminine. After so many years of hiding that side of myself, I was finally free to explore it fully with the help and support of my beautiful wife. I was in heaven. In return, Laura asked for nothing more than that I help out a little more around the house. I was so eager to show her my appreciation for all she had done that I wound up taking on almost all of the household chores. I hardly realized it, but the balance of power in our relationship, which had always been pretty much equal, had ever so slowly shifted entirely to her. Laura handled our finances, our social life, and our love life. She even insisted on driving the car wherever we went. As for our love life, it had all but escaped my attention that I had not made love to Laura as a man for three months. It didn't seem to matter to either of us. So it came as quite a shock when, one evening, as we lay in bed and Laura said she wanted to start dating a man from her office. She said it so casually, I thought I must have heard wrong. But as I lay there listening to her go on as if I were a girlfriend and not her husband, I realized that I had heard her correctly. There was a guy named Greg at her office who she had a crush on, and the feeling was more than mutual. He had pursued her for quite some time, and she had always put him off. But now Laura said she thought the time had come that I could accept the way things were. What's the matter, Juliet, dear? Laura, I hardly knew where to begin. You're talking about having an affair. But how could you... I mean, don't you love me anymore? The pleading in my voice was truly pitiful, but I couldn't help it. Of course I love you, silly, Laura said. I thought this was okay with you, I went on. I thought you didn't mind me dressing up. I don't, she said. Then why? Because I need a man in my life. But Laura, I'm your husband. Laura stopped what she was doing, propped her head on her hand, and gazed steadily into my eyes. She brushed back the long brown hair that had fallen across my face. Honey, she said quietly, look at yourself. Do you think you look like a husband? I knew I was trumped. There I was lying next to her in a baby doll nightie, silver polish on my fingers and toes, lip gloss and mascara on my face. Laura smiled gently. Juliet, I read those stories you printed out for me, every last one of them. It is so beautiful what you are trying to become. It's what you really want, and I want to help you. But you have to think of me, too. We'll still be married, and you'll continue to be important to me. I don't want to lose any of what we have. But darling, you have to give a little. You have to meet me halfway. We didn't discuss the matter anymore that night, and I didn't dare bring it up again. I began to hope that maybe Laura had changed her mind. Then, about a week later, while we ate lunch in a small bistro after a morning of shopping, she told me she was having dinner with Greg the following night. 
I felt my face tighten and my body grow rigid, but I didn't say a word. It was a very long ride home. That night in bed, Laura tried to embrace me, but I refused to respond. Okay, she said, be like that. She turned over and went to sleep. I lay awake in the dark, wondering if maybe I shouldn't have turned away her advances. I was in a precarious position after all. She could easily decide she didn't need me for anything anymore. I was so confused and worried I felt sick. I wanted her reassurance, her touch. I wanted her to tell me she loved me again. Laura, I whispered contritely into the dark, but she was already asleep. The next morning, I got up early and made Laura breakfast. She didn't seem at all angry about the night before. She was her usual bright and cheery self. She munched her breakfast and sipped at her coffee perfectly content. On the other hand, I was tense and uneasy. After breakfast, I puttered around the house doing my chores while Laura did some work on the computer. I fixed us both lunch but hardly touched my plate. If Laura noticed, she didn't say anything. She seemed determined to go through the day as if nothing out of the ordinary was about to occur. Around five or so, I heard Laura taking a shower and felt a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach. This was it, I thought. My wife was going out with another guy and there was absolutely nothing I could do about it. I remembered well the little black dress Laura was wearing. I had bought it for her to wear out to dinner on our first anniversary. I wondered if she had chosen it on purpose. Don't look so solemn, Juliet, she said. It's not the end of the world, you know. She lifted my chin and gave me a soft kiss. The taste of her lipstick remained long after the front door closed behind her. What could I do? I poured a glass of cold white wine from the fridge, took it into the bathroom, lit some candles and incense, and settled into a warm bubble bath. I tried not to think about Laura and Greg and what they might be doing before the night was over, but it was impossible. And the damnedest thing was that every time I thought of it, I felt a not totally unwelcome stirring between my legs. I dried myself off, slipped on my favorite red silk teddy and high-heeled sandals, and headed for the kitchen for a second glass of wine. Then I went to the computer room. Fortunately, the weekends were always a pretty hot time, and before I knew it, I found myself describing my plight to several of my old girlfriends. I was surprised to find that although they sympathized with me, everyone last one of them took Laura's side. I think Candy put it the best when she said quite plainly, What did you expect, Juliet? Of course she was going to go looking for a real man sooner or later. Besides, didn't you say you showed her the kinds of stories you liked? I've role-played with you enough to know that this is what you like. Admit it, I knew she was right, but a part of me still found it all so difficult to accept. I had always kept my fantasy life and my everyday life so carefully separated. Now the two were rapidly merging, and I was having trouble keeping up with all the changes coming Mayway. Yes, Candy was right. This is what I'd always fantasized about. So why was I having so much trouble accepting it? And I stayed on the chat line for longer than I expected. I was starting to feel a little better. In fact, I stayed on so that I had lost all track of time. Before I knew it, I heard a key turning in the lock and the sound of Laura's voice talking to someone. There was the sound of male laughter and I realized it must be Greg. I felt myself flush with panic. I had to get back to the bedroom. No, not the bedroom. Maybe they'd be heading there. Maybe the spare room downstairs. But to do that, I'd have to pass them on the stairs. My only hope was to close the computer room door and hope that Laura either didn't see me in there or was too absorbed in Greg to pay me much attention. But I couldn't help but feel a burning resentment that she had thought to bring him back here of all places. Couldn't they have gone back to his place? or at the very least rented a motel room somewhere? It was bad enough that Laura had decided to screw around with other men. Did she have to do it under our own roof? In our own bed? I managed to get up fast enough to close the door to the computer room and spent a few anxious seconds hoping I wouldn't be noticed. Then I heard a light tap on the door and Laura's voice. Juliet, honey, are you in there? Come on out, there's someone I'd like you to meet. I stood there trembling, heart pounding, hoping she would just go away. Juliet, stop being silly and come out of there. You're embarrassing me. I realized there was nothing to do but go through with this, no matter how humiliating. 
I opened the door slowly and saw Laura's face brighten as she took in my outfit. Oh, don't you just look scrumptious, she said. My favorite red nighty, and is that lavender I smell? Did you dress up especially for us? Before I could answer or even consider the absurd idea, was it really absurd or had I unconsciously hoped something like this would occur? Laura took my arm and half dragged me out to the living room, fighting desperately to keep my balance on my high-heeled sandals. The last thing I wanted at this point was to make my entrance falling flat on my face. Greg, I want you to meet someone, Laura said excitedly. This is Juliet. The man standing at the fireplace with a drink in his hand turned slowly. He was extraordinarily handsome, blonde, square-jawed, smiling blue eyes. He was dressed in an impeccably tailored suit with a fashionably dark blue shirt and black necktie. Even the suit could hardly conceal his powerfully built physique. So this is the little lady of the house, he said, grinning. I stood there completely dumbstruck. There I was in a nighty and heels. My face was lightly made up and I was wearing lipstick. Under the circumstances, there was no question of acting the wise guy or pretending to be tough. It would have been just too ludicrous. Besides, not only was he at least six inches taller than my five foot seven body, he must have been at least 50 pounds of solid muscle heavier. Looking at him, I couldn't help but understand why Laura had wanted him in her bed. Her bed? I was beginning to feel a little sick. Or maybe it was excitement, but excitement about what? Laura's voice brought me out of the fog. Juliet, she said sternly, don't be rude. Say hello to Greg. Hi, Greg, I said softly. Laura continued warming up to what was beginning to seem a scenario she had planned all along. Since Greg and I are going to be seeing a lot of each other in the future, Juliet, we thought it best that you came to accept your place in the, um, uh, situation as quickly and thoroughly as possible. I had no idea what she was driving at. Laura seemed to read my mind, or at least the confusion on my face. What that means, she continued, is that I don't want to hear a lot of belly aching from you, Juliet, and I especially don't want to have to endure any of your tiring pseudo-male posturing. I just won't tolerate any whining, complaining from you. As far as I am concerned, you have voluntarily given up your role as a male in this household. Do you understand? I felt like I had been betrayed. It was one thing to say this in private, but with another man present, it was almost unbearable. My face must have been as red as my nighty. I was looking at Laura pleadingly, but she was showing no mercy. Even worse, I could feel Greg's amused eyes on me the whole time. I didn't dare turn to look back at him. I'm certain if I had, I would have died of shame right then and there. I said you, I make myself understood, Laura repeated, using a tone I'd never heard her use with me before. Yes, I murmured. Good, Laura said. Then let's see how well you understand. Get on your knees, Juliet. Again, I wasn't sure I heard her correctly. Or, to be more accurate, I'd hoped I hadn't. Laura sounded angry. I'm getting tired of repeating myself, Juliet. I said on your knees. I sunk down to my knees, adjusting my feet so the high heels didn't hurt so much, wondering what was going to happen next. Give me your tie, Greg, Laura said. Sure thing, babe. A moment later, I felt Laura cross my wrists and holded me. Let's go, she said. Oh, let's get you upstairs in the bedroom. All three of us walked upstairs. I was suddenly very scared. I was completely helpless, and I had no idea of what they had planned for me. Once upstairs, she threw me on the bed, slowly walking toward me. Before long, I found my face between Laura's thighs while Greg untied his belt. Oh boy, I was not ready for what happened next. Hope you enjoyed it. From here on, the video is not suitable for YouTube anymore. Check out Patreon for the rest.